okay yeah good day to all uh, i welcome you all for this uh, uh, session regarding the aws learning session so uh, before uh, proceeding further for the course let me brief myself uh, my name is rujan and i'm having around 10 years of experience in the it industry and coming to the cloud technology i'm having like 5 years of experience managing the aws infra and cloud and i would like to uh, welcome you from the logic lab technologies uh, so uh, and coming to the next thing to discuss uh, please be interactive uh, if you have any doubts please raise your hands or give a reply on the chat so that i will be able to communicate with you all uh, so today we are going to discuss the few starting steps of the course like what is a course and what kind of uh, structure is a course and what are the things we are going to learn uh, in the future in this course which will be useful for the uh, knowledge purpose and i would like to request to remember please uh, uh, join this uh, course uh, there is a whatsapp group also there uh, so please join this whatsapp for the updates of these calls and sessions and please note down this uh, contact numbers also so that you will be in touch with our uh, logic lab technologies to know more about the course and joining the courses so if you have any doubts you can contact directly call to this uh, specific numbers which has been reflecting on the screen uh, i will share it in the chat also later on okay so uh, and uh, you can scan this uh, course content also if you want to uh, you can check the qr code also of this so that you will be able to know what is the content of the course so that will be handy for you in the future All right so uh, i hope you are able to hear me clearly if you have any doubts or facing any issue in hearing my voice please let me know i will correct it from my side okay so uh let's let's start the session from our end actually okay right so uh before going into the aws cloud and this all technologies let's let's go from the layman layout from the basics uh so what is the meaning of a computer uh that is the main questions which we rise from the childhood we are seeing the computers we are playing with the computers we are doing the programming part creating the ppts words different kind of activities nowadays are managed by the computers so uh i would like to thanks the inventor of the computer who is charles babbage as we all know he was the first person to invent invent the concept of computing so he is the person who has created the computers so the computer basically have different type of uh, hardware the combination of different type of hardwares will make a point of computers so the technology which is having in back side of the computers we will discuss in this further classes so right coming to the definition part what is the meaning of a computer computer is an electronic device of storing and processing the data typically in the binary form according to the instructions given to it in a variable program so the instructions are given by who the user the person who is using the computer will give the commands in that order the data will be saved in a binary format so that is the main concept of uh, using the computer okay so coming to the next part yeah it so there are few components which we have to remember while using the computer so the computer will have three main things you would say like processor which is very important uh, and the second part is a memory uh, which is known as the random access memory as a ram as we all know and we need a storage storage is nothing but like a pen drive like whatever the data you are having you have to store somewhere right so in the computer you will have an option of storage it will be like hard disks or ssds right and nowadays we are using the internet as fast as possible for every step for every topic we are totally inclined with the internet so to get that internet connectivity we need a networking right so there will have a nic cards into that computer so these are the main four peripherals which are required 
to run a computer okay so here we will get a doubt okay the computer is fine how the computer communicate with the user so for that perspective the operating system concept has been introduced uh, operating systems is nothing but a windows operating systems or linux what the os does is whatever the thing the user wants to convey to the computer it will work as a mediator suppose you want to click a start button with the help of a mouse so whatever the steps we do automatically the computer will able to understand in a binary format so that is the main use of using the operating systems in the current world there are different types of os available the highly used oss are windows os which is been managed by the microsoft and the second one is linux os which is managed by red hat so these are the two uh, operating systems which are being used currently in the present world and if you say in the industry level also okay so these are the uh, brief uh, structure or you can say the skeleton structure of the computer actually right if you go further deep into the cpu right so cpu is a brain of a computer and carries out the instruction of the computer programs so it is like a brain uh, as we know our body whatever the things we want to do that is been embedded with the brain so whatever the brain says our body starts to react and starts to work on it right in a same fashion the cpu works in the computer whatever the commands cpu wants to send whatever the activity is to be done it is been managed by the cpu so that is the main part of the uh, central processing unit coming to the next part is a memory what is mean by memory within a computer memory is a very high speed storage for data stored on integrated chip circuit okay so what a uh, memory means whatever the current activity is happening in the computer is managed by this memory so it will provide a memory uh, by which the activity suppose you are want to play a game in the computer the memory will be used to continue your activity parallelly you are doing some chatting with the person while playing the memory will help you to do this multitasking by help of the memory so that is the main concept of using the memory okay and coming to the next part it is storage as we discussed before slide what is the main use of storage let's go into the definition part storage is a location for the computing system files and also optional data okay this is typically a local disk stored within the computer or a network disk attached using a block protocol or iSCSI okay don't uh, uh, scratch your head for this network disk attachment or the block protocol iSCSI we will discuss it in the future so just uh, go with the first uh, definition like storage is a location for the computing system files and also optional data so to run the os it should be stored somewhere in the computer right so that it will be able to read by the cpu and by the memory so the whatever the setups available for the operating systems will be stored into this storage part which will be hsd or ssd okay so in the same fashion you are saving some pics you are saving some files or you are saving some ppts or an application right so whatever the things you are seeing that are all automatically stored on this storage part so you can see how important is the storage part without storage uh, you cannot do your activities so that is the main use of uh, storage coming to the next part networking the definition to the networking is a physical or virtual network interface which supports connectivity with the devices computers or servers so in a simple layman layout i would say that to connect with the world to have a connectivity between the transmission of the data among the computers is done with the help of a network uh, if you see to your computer or a laptop you will have a one socket ip before socket will be available uh, if you observe there you will connect your cable internet cable there and you will be peacefully connected nowadays the it is been work via wi-fi right so with the help of a wi-fi uh, we are able to connect it but in olden days like if you go in the 90s or 80s the people used to connect the cable to the computer and then they were able to uh, view the youtube or you can say the yahoo.com or you can say accessing the emails so in that way the network works a lot okay 
So uh, let's go back to the slide. Till now we have discussed what is the meaning of a computer, right? So now let I will go a little bit further towards the industrialization development. Now you may hear the word data centers. Okay, so you may heard what is a data center. Yeah, everywhere I'm able to hear what is the main use of the data centers and all. Okay, let's go first by the definition side. A large group of network computer servers typically used by the organizations for the remote storage processing and the distribution of large amount of data. Okay, fine. Let's say you are the only user. Okay, uh, but nowadays the people, multiple people are using. Okay, and the companies are uh, having a huge amount of data, right? So they have to store it and they need applications to run their products. So uh, a one computer will able to manage a one application, but suppose you are having a multiple users, okay? And you are having a large amount of data, right? You want to use, and it is to be consumed globally. To manage that bandwidth, to manage that workload, the term data center has been introduced. Okay, uh, I will go slowly into this. I will describe you further because you have to uh, able to understand what is a data centers because based on that only the next courses, next topics will be uh, bridged on that. Okay, so coming to the uh, data centers. So right, so. So this is the way which the data centers looks like. You see a person, a lady is standing in between the racks. These racks are having a n number of machines, right? The machines is nothing but a CPU, right? CPU memory, like you see the storage, like everything, whatever the things required that has been available in this racks actually. How they look, I will show you. So this is called a rack server. This is called a tower server. Okay. And this is called a blade server. Let me give you a simple example, uh, or I will elaborate what it is. A combination of rack server, a combination of blade server is called uh, this compartment. So in this compartment, it will have a combination of 10 to 20 servers, right? So each server, uh, or you can say, uh, forget about server. Remember like this is computer. Okay, this computer will have a CPU, we will have memory, and it will have network connectivity, and it will be connected to the storage from the back end. So these are the rack servers, rack machines, which are having high configuration. These are not like i7 or i5 processor having eight or 10 GB of memory. No, they will have like 100 to 200 GB of uh, memory. High high end processors will be available because the load which is the people are using the data which is coming into the data centers, uh, the people who are using globally, right, to manage or to um, counter strike those load. These kind of servers are very very important nowadays. Uh, you may just give you a simple example Gmail. Or you can say your YouTube. Okay, suppose you upload a one you, you video to the YouTube, right. So where it is being stored and where it is being managed, how we are able to view it, all these stuffs are managed by the term data centers. Okay. So whatever the video you upload straight directly uh, saved into the data center storage department. From there, if you want, if you click the web, uh, web link of that video, it will trigger to the rack servers. From there, it will trigger to the storage. So in this way, the connectivity happens and we are able to seamlessly viewing the videos from the computers, from the mobiles, from the tablets, from the pamphlets. So these kind of structures is managed by with the help of using the data centers. Okay. So in this, you will have two types of uh, servers, rack servers and the tower servers. It is just a difference in the physical look. Internally, both are same. The rack servers are like horizontal, the tower is like what uh, vert vertical level. So it is only a pictorial representation. Apart from that, everything will be same in this. So this is the main thing of uh, using the data centers. So as we know, there are various data centers. 
for good news you can say there are few data centers available in india also uh, one is available in mumbai one is available in bangalore and recently it is available in hyderabad region also uh, so these data centers are very secured no persons no outside persons are allowed to view these data centers only the authorized person have a rights to access this data centers actually okay so i will show you the one uh, diagram see this is if you see this it will have a big uh, space which is almost the size of a two football stadiums or depending upon the size of the data centers it will varies so you can see it is totally restricted to the outside people only the authorized persons like windows admin or you can say the data center administrators have a rights to uh, to access this data centers because the reason is the data centers have a secure data which is which is very very important for the clients if something what happens their whole infra got down and they will have a major impact all over the globe okay and this uh, data centers will have a temperature management okay so here a vast amount of computing is happening so the vast amount of heat is generated to manage that temperature to work seamlessly the it is totally air conditioned they will maintain a chilled environment in the data center actually okay so this is a main uh, structure of the data centers okay now let's go to the next part a uh, little bit deeper okay right cloud technologies and now nowadays you are hearing like from last five years we are able to hear what is cloud technologies the cloud computing we are able to hear these kind of words from the persons to the computers to the uh, websites to the blogs from the friends you know, and from the engineer side discovered uh, cloud computing cloud technologies so let's go simply what is the meaning of a cloud technologies okay the cloud is a virtual space that exists on an internet it is a storage space where people can place the digital resources such as software applications files in a simpler way we can say that the cloud is a virtual storage space on an internet okay let me explain simply suppose you are st you are uh, staying in a room in front of you you are having a computer right so you are saving your storage you are doing the work on the laptop physically right for suppose uh, you don't have computer okay let's say you want to store your data sometimes what happens uh, suppose your laptop got crash okay your data got get corrupted in that case what will happen you will face a uh, serious issues like you cannot retrieve the data uh, and for suppose there is some uh, network outage suppose you are uh, a uh, network provider is unable to provide internet what will happen your work will get hampered the disconnections will be there right and sometimes the os os get affected by this we will be unable to communicate with the computer right so these kind of parameters will also observe during the usage of the computer right now you are the only one user for suppose uh coming to the cloud technology what happened is everything has come into the virtual space means difference between physical and virtual means the physically means you are able to see the computer but in the virtual side what happens you do your work <coughs> you save your data but you don't know where the data has been stored but it is under the control of the secure security team managed by the cloud so there will be no hamper in the storage and all and in application levels so what happening here is uh, it is making easier for you to access the data to run your application around the globe you can uh, access the application at the home you can access it from the premises you can access it from the us you can access that data from the japan from the uk or from the australia so what is happening here is reliability increasing of your accessibility of your data and your application so that has been diversified by with the help of a cloud technologies okay i hope you are able to understand i am not making you bore actually so uh, so this is the main reason of using the cloud technologies right so nowadays you will hear different types of cloud technologies right so currently in the market there are three cloud technologies available uh, as i say 
one is aws which is known as amazon web services and the second is microsoft azure and the third is gcp which is called a google cloud platform okay so these are the three platforms uh, which are highly reliable and most of the companies most of the infrastructures are managed by this these three cloud providers uh, so coming to the usage part all these three are currently heavily used in the market currently the aws and the azure are working very good and gcp is also progressing a lot so the so depending upon the requirement the people goes to this cloud providers actually okay so if you see this diagram you can see the user device see he is a user okay suppose i am the user i am trying to accessing this data center or you can say cloud technology uh, you can see the application you can see the database okay you can see the servers in the green so these are all the racks as i show you like the racks and the uh, tower servers so these are the six green uh, green colored are the servers and then above on that the application and the database has been connected right the database means the storage part your data whatever the data you are adding into it is available in this database actually i'm saying in the layman layout there are different terminologies for database if you go further into it so it will comes into the another picture of this course okay. so you can see the user is able to access via the internet this applications and database so this is the main pictorial representation and the main structure skeleton structure of using the cloud technology okay right so in cloud technologies there are different types of cloud technologies right uh, we can go for first three like infrastructure as a service platform as a service and the software as a service so these are the three types of uh, uh, cloud technologies which are currently using in the infra or in the environments actually okay so if you go further before going into the cloud computing to more uh, understandable let me give you the differences between the computer and the server i have uh, used the word server right you know what is computer but what is the meaning of a server let's see what is the main difference between the computer and the server let's see what is the main things here right so computer computer will have a cpu and a processor in the server you will have a cpu and the processor same as it is computers will have a ram servers will also have a ram right in the same way the storage will be stored right and additional storage will be there to storing your data right it is connected to the network adapters uh, computer in the same way the servers are also connected so most of them are same so what is the differences uh, so let me show you to the next one right the computer is able to be used by only one user suppose you are having a computer in your home you are the only person you can able to access it from that specific system but in the server a multiple users can access with the help of a server os right computer will have windows os suppose windows 10 right uh, whatever they are coming now right now okay and if you go to the server level, you have different type of windows like windows 2012 we have 2003 it has started from windows nt which has been vanished 2003 is there it is also vanished currently it is running 2016 2020 right so these are the windows servers which are used currently in infra what is the main usage of it a multiple users can access these servers in a multiple geographical locations so that is the main difference of uh, computers and the servers okay the next thing is need inputs output devices to connect to access the system right what is need by need input and output devices like for the computer you need a cpu okay you need a network connectivity and all from your end but here what will you do is you will connect to the system or to the server remotely with the help of a rdp which is known as a remote desktop protocol and the second one is ssh which is used by linux uh you will be able to understand in the next part actually okay so this is the way how the people are how the engineers you can say the administrators or you can say the cloud engineers um, try to access the servers from the office levels so this is the main difference of uh, you 
computer and a server okay all right uh this will confuse you leave it okay right now let's further deep dive what is the use the student is telling here computer is there cloud computing is there. what is the main use of using this cloud computing let's let's uh, focus on this because these are the things you have to remember you're able to understand like why the people the people may ask here that you're having computer why there is a need of using a cloud computing right so let's go deep into it variable versus capital expenses right so there are uh, there are a few advantages of using the cloud computing economics of the scale uh, uh guessing of the capacity increasing the speed and agility and go global in a minutes so these are like some uh infrastructure terminologies i will explain you uh further okay capital expenditures means suppose a company is there they want to set up a data center or cloud for that they need an expenditure right so for that they have to provide their expenditure what happens currently in the in the olden days the company will create their old data centers and they will manage they will manage the whole expenses even if one small part of a computer goes breakdown the company has to bear it right and there will be some delay in getting that part suppose the cpu is getting fault or you can say the storage part is damaged the hard disk is damaged so uh, there are the hardware providers you can say the ibm lenovo these are all the hardware providers for the data centers. They will provide this compute and hardware storage resources. So if something got damaged, we have to call to the IBM or the Lenovo teams. They will come, they will replace the equipment in like one day or 24 or three days, depending upon the availability of the parts. So all these expenditures, all these waiting periods are to be managed by the, com by the companies, okay? So, uh, and the networking also they have to manage, right? And then the operational expenditure. Once the infrastructure is established by the computer, then you have to engage the resources. You can say like a computer engineer, you can say the desktop engineers, and you can say data center engineers. These are the people who manage the data centers from the inside. So they, you need this kind of workforce. You need to pay for this, right? So. To manage all these things, the company has to again bear for it, right? So uh, uh, this is a little bit further. There is no required of it actually. Okay. So to manage these expenditures, the people has advanced to go towards the cloud computing. You get a subscription of the cloud computing. That's it. You don't need to manage the data center. You don't need to manage the resources which are available in the data centers. So that is the main difference of using the cloud computing and maintaining the data centers. It will reduce your cost of expenditures. It will increase your scalability. Scalability means suppose uh, you need two computers. After one day, you need one more computer. Total three computers are required. In a few seconds, you will get that computer also with the help of a cloud computing virtually. Okay, so here in a few seconds, you will get a new resources. Right, so that is the main usage of uh, using the cloud computing. And security level wise, it is highly high secured. The data will be secured. No hacker or no outside person will be able to access this uh, data center because these are totally managed by the firewalls. A strict firewalls will be there. Uh, so that is there, okay. So coming to the next part of this, till now we have discussed what is cloud computing, what is data centers, right? So next, there are different type of clouds are there. You can see a private cloud, public cloud, okay? And the hybrid cloud. So what is the main difference between public, private, and hybrid? If you see in the name private. Private cloud means whatever the cloud you are getting from the provider like AWS or Azure or GCP, those resources will be accessible to the specific team only. That means whatever the resources available in the uh, cloud provider will be managed and will be used by your team only. Okay, so no other person will be able to access or no other company will be able to access that resources. So if you go from definition level, the private cloud is a cloud service that is exclusively offered to one organization by using a 
private cloud, an organization can experience the benefit of cloud computing without sharing the resources with other organizations. Okay. And coming to the public cloud, uh, if you see in the name public, means the resources will be shared by the different organizations. Suppose you're having a company A, you're having a company B. So these two companies will share this cloud. Okay. So there is no restriction in it. The multiple uh, companies can come and share this uh, cloud. So there are cloud providers like AWS, Azure, GCP, DigitalOcean, Alibaba. So you can see the Alibaba cloud is also there. It is also running in the current world. Okay. And in the definition by wise, you see the public cloud is a cloud deployment model where computing resources are owned and operated by a provider and shared across multiple tenants via the internet. Okay. And coming to the hybrid cloud, hybrid cloud is a combination of public and private. Okay. So the hybrid cloud is a cloud computing environment that uses a mix of on-premises and private cloud and third party and public cloud services with orchestration between these platforms. Okay. Right. So till now, any doubts you want to discuss? Uh, No. Okay. Fine. Right. Okay. Till now we have discussed what is infrastructure, what is cloud, and what is data centers. Right. So let's further uh, proceed into the real part of the AWS. Right. Okay. Uh, I have rise. Yeah, Madhuka, tell me. Yeah, Madhuka. Adhikar, are you able to speak? Yakub, can you guide me this? Uh, am I unable to Anna? Yeah, okay, fine. Unmute. Uh, let me see if I'm able to unmute from my side. Uh, uh, Ibrahim Shah, yeah. Uh, you have raised any doubts you have? Uh, can you hear me? Yes, yes, I'm going to hear. Yes, yes, sir. So uh, in the private cloud, uh, where would be the server and the storage would be? Is it in there? Uh, for example, a, a organization is looking for a private cloud mm -hmm. that mm -hmm. uh, is available in their locality or in the some, somewhere else in the cloud? Uh, see, uh, basically in their availability, suppose, suppose your organization is Hyderabad, okay? And uh, you will have a data center manage or cloud I suppose AWS is there, okay? So these are will be available in the same premises, but the usage of the resources will be different. These are all will be available in the same premises, but there will be differentiation actually. So okay. they will dedicate the specific resources to that private team actually. So the public cloud is shared among other companies in the sense, uh, um, how about the data privacy? And then, uh, because uh, the same storage would be used for mm -hmm. multiple mm -hmm. companies. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, the company yeah. ensuring. Yes, yes, yes. The data is secured, actually. Uh, they are using the encryption concept here, actually. Whatever the data you stayed in the storage, that will be in encryption format. So the other organization will unable to access those data, first thing. They will have that uh, separation wall, actually, uh, in the back end, in the cloud level, actually. So there will be no chance of uh, able to view the data of the another organization in this case. Okay, thank you. Yeah. Sorry, Madhukar, I'm unable to uh, make you. Uh, you can chat also if you want to. Okay, fine. Uh, yeah. Yeah, Chaitanya, uh, you're telling something.
ఫీచర్స్ ప్రొవైడెడ్ బై దిస్ ఏడబ్ల్యూఎస్ ఆర్ యూ కెన్ సి ఎస్ యూర్ ఓకే సో ఇట్ దేవ్ బైఫర్కేటెడ్ దీస్ రిసోర్సెస్ వాట్ ఎవర్ ద కంప్యూట్ or the storage is available in the infra that is used by the specific organization suppose i am having some uh, laptop business okay so whatever the resource i am required that is been accessible to me only i will pay a different amount for that private cloud actually okay. so will, they, will is... they provide a private cloud means in the uh, the customer uh, in the customer place only they will um, they will equipment the cloud in the in no. their data center only mm, so here what happens is we will not keep any equipments here whatever the data whatever the applications we are able to install on that private cloud actually uh you know are you able to getting or uh, i am confusing you so pub- public cloud means aws azure and gcp will they provide mm. private cloud also yes yes they will provide a private cloud also so in the, so, in the definition i have mentioned this azure aws but mm-hmm. if you go in the real time uh, there will have a private cloud and public cloud in the uh, provider level also so there will be like a very virtual private cloud some some vpcs will be there some yes yes so yes. for private cloud there will be vpc for a public cloud there will not be a vpc like no no vpc will be there for both uh mm-hmm. for the private vpc what happens is they will restrict it means they will close all the ports of the network so the only the authorized users will able to access that vpc okay and if you go to the public the vpc will be there but it will be shared by the different users actually okay uh rafi uh, are you able to hear yeah i am audible yes yes mohammed yes okay uh, the thing here would be could you please provide me any example of hybrid cloud and private cloud so you can get a better idea uh uh-huh, uh-huh. okay okay hybrid cloud example right Yeah, for example public cloud it's an aws and everyone can work right so in the same manner could you please provide us some examples for hybrid cloud as well as private clouds mm-hmm. okay so uh hybrid cloud uh, means it is a combination like as i said before private and public yeah so uh, uh here the hybrid cloud is provided by the azure and aws okay the first thing so you you, you don't get confused with this terminology actually this one okay so you remove you forget about it okay so this hybrid cloud and public are provided by all these this uh, cloud providers okay so the data center will be there or the cloud data center will be there there you will have an option of hybrid cloud where you can use this public and the private in it actually in the combination okay i will explain it further actually uh, i think you are all getting confused is public private and hybrid uh, i will elaborate in this uh, uh, in the further session actually right is it fine rafi uh... yeah it's fine yeah okay uh, krishna uh, krishna you want to say something 
do you have a course content that you you would follow yes in yes days? yes no i am in this after this uh, small session i am going to share that uh, i'm going to tell you the what is a course content and all actually just for the briefing i am share till now the in information let me do that yeah sure okay uh, along with the course content would there be any uh, dumps or uh, interview questions that can be provided uh currently uh currently it is not it is available there but currently we are focusing main on the course content actually so whatever the sessions will be happen that will be pre-recorded and shared to the learner peoples actually uh we can discuss interview questions also uh but i have to check to the terms actually interview questions are like various companies to companies right so but the basic questions we can discuss in the sessions actually okay uh, also, uh, I mean, you you have a experience in AWS, is it? Yes, yes, Krishna. Okay, and uh, I mean, between AWS to Azure, uh, would there be any migrations? Is it even possible? I'm just asking. I am I have no. Yes, it is idea. possible, Krishna. Yes, yes, it is possible. Absolutely oh. possible. If you don't like AWS, you need some more like a cost benefiting. You can migrate to Azure also. Uh, those migration okay. steps will be there so you can migrate among the different clouds the aws to azure okay. azure to aws or azure to gcp yes you have that parameter okay. On, on a, okay on a brief would that be also discussed during the course a uh, little bit uh, because the migration is separate category actually but we will discuss how we migrate the computers and all uh, to the infrastructure and all. okay and because, by the end of the yeah. course would yeah, yeah, 10 minutes. Yeah, yeah, no, 10 minutes. At the end of the course, would I be able, able to uh, do the solution architect? Uh, uh, I mean, I want to do that certification. Yes, so, yes, yes. Uh, I mean, would this yes, course you will be able to? Yes, yes. Yeah. yes, yes, yes. This this course will help in preparation of the solution architect role, actually. So we have taken that uh, solution architect structure, of course, uh, into this. So that you will be able okay. to practice and make it possible to complete the solution project. Okay. Yeah, fourteen experience, uh, fourteen years experience in sand storage. Okay. So I okay. wanted to uh, learn uh, AWS as well as Azure also. Uh, so okay. Just okay. Okay. This. okay. Yeah, fine. No, it's a good to learn two technologies, but I would prefer to say that get a grip on first one technology. Suppose it is Azure or okay. AWS, so then you can okay. go because whatever happening is in the companies you need a one compulsory one cloud should be confirmed and should be grip on that technology actually that will make a basement in the cloud world actually right okay. so based on that yeah. the requirement you can upgrade yourself yeah no issues okay, okay. thanks okay. thanks Richard. yeah yeah uh thank you uh, uh let me go further actually uh coming to the course actually uh we are going to teach aws course okay uh i will i will uh, answer your questions actually uh, give me a few minutes right let me complete because the people are eager to know what is the course and all right uh give me a second so if we i show you this is the course content of the course it will okay so here we will discuss the network basics okay uh, and uh, uh, here components of the computing and certifications means what kind of certifications are there in the AWS level, okay? And the components of the and the data center, what is virtualization? What is the concept of virtualization? Okay. And then as we discussed the type where we are getting doubts, right? I will clarify further more in the next sessions what is public, private, and hybrid, as our friends asking. So these are the things we will discuss. Expenditure also we will discuss and the basic things like what is the networking what is happening in the networking side we have to discuss because these are like a basic things uh, if you want to learn the cloud the basic of networking is to be remembered okay and what is subnetting what is side range and what is osi model so these are the prerequisites which are required it is not like mandatory but it's better to know these things actually in the future now the aws cl cloud course will start okay aws as a public cloud okay what is aws region okay and availability zone in aws higher availability overview of the services like networking storage computer dns etc internet access management identity access management sorry which will have users rules and policies 
and uh, you will have a vpc okay. yes i'm sharing something yes yes are you able to see uh, no i mean the screen Oops. is uh, at different clouds oh, okay that's, right that's one second yeah, sorry 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 Krish. one second share let me know i'm confused sorry so uh, are you able to see now yeah okay, yes. okay okay let me repeat it thank you thank you krishna sure. yeah okay so coming to the course content uh we are going to cover the basics like cloud networking basics and the aws cloud actually so coming to the networking side we will discuss these stuffs like certification in the aws what are the components of the computing uh what is the meaning of data centers and all introduction to virtualization okay an introduction to cloud computing these are the basic informations introduction part what are the type of clouds and basics of networking cider subnetting osi models okay and coming to the core part of the aws course we will discuss this like what is aws public cloud what is aws region what is availability zone in aws what is higher availability and different types of aws services like networking storage database dns etc and you will discuss identity access management which is having roles users policies okay we will discuss about the vpn like one of our friend told uh, vpcs right so virtual private cloud we will discuss and the networking side we will discuss vpc subnets nacl route table public and private cloud internet gateway nat so these are the topics we will cover in the networking part of the aws core okay and then coming to the compute part one we will discuss what is elastic cloud compute okay what is instance types what is on demand instance reserved instance amazon machine image ami which is one of the beautiful uh, feature of aws and coming to the storage part what kind of storages we will use like block storage elastic block storage understanding when to use block storage okay and uh, different type of volumes and we will discuss about snapshots and how we create a volumes how we create ami snapshots okay these are things we will discuss and coming to the compute part two we will discuss higher availability we will discuss horizontal scaling vertical scaling load balancer and we'll discuss about classic load balancer network load balancer application load balancer okay uh, and next the oldest service provided by aws that is s3 simple storage services that we will discuss which is used mostly most of the people in the world uh, the people like us also using this uh, s3 right we will discuss what is s3 in create retiring what is standard infrequent access one zone infrequent access glaciers glacier deep archive okay and this is rds dynamo db route 53 okay uh then we will discuss this basic basic terminologies like email services sqs what is sqs so these are the things we will discuss in our course okay it will we will take like around 45 days course duration means depending upon our flow of course yeah okay so this is a course structure Okay, uh, one second, someone is asking. Uh, sorry, yeah. Sorry, Madhikar, I'm unable to unmute you. Ask to unmute. Yeah, Krishna, tell me. With me, yeah. Yeah, Chaitanya, Krishna, tell me. So, how to practice all these things is uh, how? Yes, to practice this Chaitanya, what we will do is uh, first we will do the theoretical part, okay, and then we have to uh, let me share that you have to practice regularly in a fashion. One second, let me show you uh, screen, okay. So, there are two things which you have to do in the practice level, Chaitanya. The first thing is theoretical way. So you're able to see my screen, right? Uh, no. Uh, no. No. Now you're able to see, right? You are showing some Gmail. Yes, yes, right. Exactly. Exactly. Let me show you that. Okay. AWS. Okay. So there are two parameters. The first thing is 
you have to remember the theoretical part and the practical way you have to sign in into the console on your own okay you have to create i will show you how to create this account also so you will be able to practice in this so which will help you to understand the practice we have some restrictions on the free tire but that will be sufficient to practice so in this way you will be able to practice the practical level like creating the instances managing the instances i will show you that uh, practical so part also you from can able side. to practice uh, on free of cost uh, or need to pay something to you uh, aws for practice see for the first one year you have to pay like one dollar as a security uh so for the one year it will be free uh, after one year you have to pay for it actually whatever the services you want to use actually so you should be very conscious i would suggest to all that we should be very conscious while using the services whatever services you use you use it and straight away after that delete that services so in that way you can able to learn actually okay right so, so that you you will take care of that part also so how to okay. How means i will help you in i will help in creating the uh, aws account actually mm -hmm. there you can able to access the resources and all okay. okay from our side we will tell you how to create and how to do and we will share these videos right from our side we will do it but but to manage the aws that is the individual's responsibility yes, yes. even i am using my own uh, like so there is no contributions from the logic labs actually so it is okay. managed by our own actually Okay. Right. right. Yeah. 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 Uh, Ibrahim Shah, tell me. Yeah. Ibrahim, no. Ibrahim, are you able to hear us? No. Uh, okay. Let's let's give a chance to Krishna. Yeah, uh, Krishna. Yeah. So, so while you are teaching uh, theoretical side by side, you would be also showing us in, in this AWS portal also. Yes, exactly, exactly, Krishna. So I will share you the. Uh, we will take a theoretical session and straight away i will show you how to create this in the practical level also like logging into this aws console and showing oh. which clicks we have to do which services we have to use that i will show you in that yeah oh. Okay. right uh, so yeah thank, thank, yeah. Okay, thank you um so this training is uh, is the training focusing on any certification like a, a solution architect or practitioner certification um, basically it is it is being pictured for solution architect actually actually what happening here ibrahim shah is first we have to learn from our side and we have to brush up from our end basically that was the same question which i have asked in the starting phase of the courses when i learn but what i i have got to understood is the first we have to learn this course and on our own we have to do the practices it will make uh, easier for us to as you told like solution at it associate level course you can able to complete uh, there are three phases aws practitioner aws associate solution at it and the professional so associate level is is fine for like mid engineer or like suppose a fresher they will be able to crack this so for that level of course this course is sufficient actually and coming to the professional level that will purely depend upon your experience and the way of resources actually you are using okay thank you Anup, uh, Anup, you want to ask something? Hey, <clears throat> hey yeah. thanks yeah, for Anup. taking me. You're able to hear yeah. me? Yes, yes, Anup, I'm able to hear you. Okay, thank you, first of all. Uh, I just wanted yeah. to check my settings, if it's working fine or not. And the second yeah. thing is, I don't see the chat enabled, uh, Sujan. Yes, yes actually, we, he, uh, it is for all, actually. It has been disabled for all, actually uh okay. so uh, yeah just for starting phase we are we are being disabled but later on sessions we will enable that uh, part also 
I appreciate that. Thank you. So, and you're going to share the course content. Uh, is it going to be our email or how do we communicate? Uh, yes. To communicate, actually, uh, before the starting of the slides, we will share you. And I would request to join this WhatsApp group, actually. Uh, I think I'm this, part of you, that. Yes, yes. It is a part of it. So, so these are the things. Uh, the people will, our, our team members will sh uh, contact you. So, I would recommend to join this uh, WhatsApp group, actually. You want me to share in the chat? I would appreciate that. And if you could stay yeah. there, I'll take... Uh picture of it yeah sure. yeah sure sure no problem no problem i would recommend to all people also to take a screenshot of it if required if we have any doubts our team members yakub is there he will guide us our team members are there so you can call to any of these numbers from the us also they will call uh so they will help you and, and sujan uh, the payment wise are they the right people to call we yes to yes yes Yes, they are the correct persons to get your doubts and regarding the payments also. They will uh, straight away uh, track you for this actually. Got it. And this course, is it on all seven days a week, five days a week, what? It will be like five days a week from Monday to Friday actually. For the starting okay. phase, it will be Monday to Friday. If something happens, if getting some delay from my side, then we will engage Saturday because the Saturday Sunday is like a off, right? So it will be difficult to all the people to join the session for it. So. Got it. And so today is a Friday. So tomorrow and day after tomorrow is a holiday, right? We got yes, started. right, right. Yes, yes. Today is Thursday. in India. It is Thursday, and tomorrow there will also one session as per oh. the Friday right, from India. So today is Thursday in India. Okay, got yeah. it. Yeah. Sure. Thank you, man. I'll be on mute for now. Thank you. Yeah, sure, sure. If you want, you can scan this also. It will give a course content also for this. So it will give all details. So, yeah. Okay. And let me give a chance to another. Uh, sorry, Madhukar, I am trying, but there is some issue from your side. So unable to make it. Yeah. And Abdul Rahim, uh, anything you want to ask? Hi, Sujan. I have a small doubt. Yeah. While I was listening class, uh, you said that there is a public or private. Yes, yes, device. yes. So yeah. in a private server, who has the accessibility for data, whether it is a private or from set or from a public set? Or both can use so that see the data. No, no, the, the data, whoever, the, the simple thing is, whoever the providing the resources, like suppose I am the user, right? So I will only have a rights to view that data. Even it is going a public or a private, Okay, there is a separation is there. It is not like your public is there. So any person can see my data. No, that is not like that actually. So whether it goes to public or private, the data will be secured. Whoever the having the rights, those people will have a rights to view that actually. And another doubt is that can a person from non-technical background can be able to get a job in this AWS software? Mm, I would say yes, Abdul, yes. Means non technical means uh, like an MBA or like that you are telling? No, non technical means a completely other degree other than having this. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Uh, suppose you are having a BSc degree, suppose like physics or computers or like that, they are fine to go into this tune. But but they will have a try. But if you are from like uh, from the biological background or something like that, then that will be a little bit difficult to get the jobs in this. Right. Okay. So degree Suppose, is, yeah, yeah, degree degree is, is like, like a minimum. Degree. Yeah, degree is required. If you say like a diploma is also there, there are some few people are there who got an experience and then they have jumped to this cloud with the help of a diploma degrees also. Means these are different different parameters they will consider while recruiting. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. I hope I clear your doubts apart from Madhukar, uh, right? Uh, you have any doubts, please contact our team members uh, as I share the details. They will contact me and reach me for that actually. So I hope uh, Rakesh, yeah. Rakesh, anything you want to say now? Sorry for late. Hi, Sujan. Good morning. Yeah, yeah. Good morning, yeah, Rakesh. I'm having one general doubt like I'm from a mechanical background. 
right right so will i be able to understand the technical part what you are teaching yes yes rakesh absolutely you can able to understand it see the engine in the engineering part any persons can do this course because the computer is a basic thing even the non technical part person can able to understand if you are able to understand the computers like how you are managing it so coming to the mechanical also there are many people who has moved to cloud and they are working very uh, good in the companies so uh, you will able to track it actually and one more my doubt is like uh... i'm presently working in a software domain where i want to i mean like shift in the cloud architect mm -hmm. so mm -hmm. will this course will be helpful for me to shift to that job yes yes it will be helpful yes yes yes, yes. it will help you to understand the terminologies and what is happening in the cloud and based on the interviews you crack you will be able to get the job on it actually okay so okay. any certification like that from this course uh, yes means we don't provide any certification but we will guide you like we will teach you the course actually okay so you have to do the certification like aws certifications uh, as uh, like cloud practitioner or you can say associate solution architect level course certification then you will have credibility in the market but i would say one thing ramesh like to all the people first learn the course get the content have a grip on it okay based on that you prepare for the certification see it is not like that if you don't have a certification you will not get a job no it is not like that you should have a knowledge first on what is aws okay and there are many people who are working in the platform they don't have certification but they are totally technically sound right where the certification help you is in the picking your resumes right but most of the part the knowledge matters a lot in the interviews panel also okay so that is yeah. a process yeah okay i understand got it yeah. thank you yeah thank you thank you uh thank you all uh i will uh, repeating it again please uh, take a screenshot of this actually so if you have any doubts please join this session and please join this whatsapp group also uh right and if you need a course content you take this qr code also and if you contact our team members they will also share you this uh, data and all right okay so i hope uh, this was a great session to you all and i am looking forward to join the sessions for tomorrow okay and thank you thank you very much to everyone uh, for having showing the interest in this course so, yeah Thank you thank you to all yeah i'm closing the session right okay thank you